All right, what's up, everyone? This is Tyler Herma with Team Let's Eat, owner of the Wolves Wall Street FX trading group. We're bringing another weekly analysis for the first week of the year, actually. Happy New Year's, everyone. Um, January 2022, Sunday. And we have a couple of pairs to go over today. And we actually are adding crypto to the, uh, to the arsenal. And we're actually currently in a trade. So I'm going to go over this trade and what um, what happened, why, why the entry was placed, what we're looking for. And then we have a couple other pairs. So gold and pound Aussie. So getting into Bitcoin, what we have here, or what happened, I should say, is we had this area where, actually, let me start on the daily. So the daily is very bearish. We have lots of sell pressure. We had a big sell off from up here, right? I see how we tapped these levels. We actually, if I actually, I don't even need to draw the line, but pay attention. So right here, you can see what we did is we barely spiked above that, grabbed all this liquidity, and then completely dumped. So it's very bearish. Zooming into the four hour, uh, that's what we saw right here. We broke this low and we, okay, go to one hour. We made this area right here where lots of orders are placed. We tried to break it three times and failed. What we did is we made lower lows. Then what happened is we came back up into this area made a higher low and we snapped up and fell over. Then we slowly crept back up, which actually we had a sell entry right here. We crept back up into this area, which is right when I placed uh, my first entry. And then as we stalled, we came back up second entry and just a little bit ago, a few hours ago, we snapped back up for a third time for the third entry. And the targets are going to be these weekly levels. So first target is going to be this low of in the 42,000 range, possibly take partials as it's hitting the low 43s. Um, that's the full target right here. But if as long as the bearish pressure continues, in the weeks to come, I can see price hitting lows of 40,000. And unfortunate as it is for like long-term crypto holders, I can see Bitcoin coming back all the way down to these lows. Um, I'm not gonna get too far ahead, but the overall outlook for right now is just to hit um, these first targets right here, more specifically this. What I'm really waiting for to see is price break 46,000. And as long as we can break 46,000, I think then we're gonna have a very easy path down to these lows over here. Um, so it's all depending on if we can break that or not. At the moment, we are holding this level as you can see. So we are definitely still stuck in this range. However, if we're going to drop, I do not think we will break above this high or possibly even these highs. Um, who knows, we might not even tap this level again. So that's what the stop loss is. Stop loss is actually right above here. Um, target way down there. It's a good risk to reward. I think it was risking 777 to five and a half thousand. So that's like nine, no, one to eight, something like that. Uh, but that's it for Bitcoin. So that's already in place. So now we're just kind of sitting back and watching. In the instance that price does come back up to these areas, I'm looking for just another spike, you know, something like this is not out of the realm here. Um, but as long as we stay under 
this high, I am definitely bearish and believing that we are going to see price roll over into these lows. So with Bitcoin being covered, let's move on to a good friend, gold. So all in all, uh, with gold, what I'm looking for is these highs. So let me go to the weekly. What I have is this weekly high right here marked up at 1850 essentially. And then we have these weekly highs marked up at 1834. Last week was very bullish. Uh, we did get a couple of good buy entries here. I ended up closing them before uh, the market closed Friday. So going forward this week, what I'm expecting is a continuation of that bullish pressure. Once we get up here, we might stall for a week, similar to um, this scenario. We stalled for a few days here. Uh, we stalled for a few days here, same with here, right? So <clears throat> this coming week, I think it's gonna be mainly a buying week. And maybe here we consolidate and get a good entry. And then the following week, I'm expecting it to tip over. So a couple things coming down the pipeline with gold. With that being said, let's just kind of break down what happened here. So we had price come down into these lows and we made a low, high, low, high. We snapped under it, grabbed the low right there, took this one out, blasted past all of these highs, made a new high right there, okay? Now we're starting our uptrend. So we made a high, we made the higher low. We made another higher high. We actually got a sell entry right here, higher low. Um, we got a buy entry about right here. Now we've made this higher high. So what I'm expecting is gold to tap those weekly levels, right? Let me zoom out a little bit. Tap this and have some sort of initial reaction uh, to give us that third leg down. So as you can see, we obviously, we have one leg, two leg. What I'm expecting is a third leg down possibly from this level right here. So a short-term sell just to, uh, you know, play both sides of the market. And from that sell, I'm expecting to buy all the way up to 1850. So, you know, that's going to be a solid like 350 pips. If we respect this level, uh, the second level I have is right here. Okay, so pretty much the range of this four hour candle is what I'm looking at. If we draw the FIB on, we can see that's pretty on par. If I, I'm drawing it up to the top, right? Because I think, big, or think gold's gonna move up more. So I'm not drawing it right here, I'm drawing it up here. All right, so if we turn around up here, we can see the FIB is within these levels. So everything lines up pretty well. Another thing is if I measure this one and then I copy and paste it and I pull it right here, it's very similar in size. The structure of it is different, but this, the length is similar. So if I copy it one more time, you can see we pull it up right there. Again, the structure is gonna be different, but the length is what I'm after. So I think we're gonna get a pretty evenly length uh, pullback. Obviously it's gonna look different, um, but that's what I'm kind of looking for for this um, buy opportunity is down here. So once we get up to these levels, I'm gonna be watching the 10 minute because what I'm expecting is a spike above here, possibly 20 to 40 pips, depending on you know what type of pressure we get. And once it starts coming back down, I will look to enter a sell. And again, the target is gonna be right here. Okay, once you get right here, I'm closing out the sell and then the eyes switch over to looking at buying, right? So um, is, I mean, even if it plays within the structure and makes, you know, comes down here and does whatever it wants to do, um, then I will be out of the sell. I won't be focused on holding the sell. I'll just be focused on waiting for the best time to enter that buy button. Now there is the instance that price just continues to explode upwards. And if that's the case, then this 
short-term sell and this buy obviously won't happen if we just explode up then we're simply just going to be waiting for the best sell opportunity um, if we break this high then obviously we have this structure right here to uh, analyze and go about um, it would probably come up to 1865 or 1870 at most uh, but I really don't think it'll come back and tap these highs. I think we're going to see the rejection at the neckline of where this broke and fell over. So, yeah, a couple, a couple of different scenarios for gold. We could see price coming down here. We can short it because that's around two to 300 pips. And then we buy it. And the other scenario is price just moves up from here, maybe like a 20 pip move down, 60 pip move down for the wick pull up there and then that's when we get the big sells. So just kind of waiting to see what happens. Um, staying very patient because when price comes up here, I want to give it enough time to try to break it. And I want the candles to show me enough information and prove to me that it won't break it and it's not going to break it. Um, so it all depends on the price action that happens as we hit this level because it very well can just break through here. Obviously, uh, gold can have massive strength. Like right here, it looked like it was about to tip over and pull back and then it just freaking exploded. So um, we don't wanna enter cells if this is possible or if this is gonna happen. And we're gonna move the stop loss to the entry fairly quickly because let's say we move up in this area and then we start rejecting. So we press a sell, right? And we get a nice sniper entry right on the top of the four hour wick. If it's gonna move down, it will not touch that high again. So for example, let's say um, we actually got an entry at I think 1816 was when I entered as after this candle closed, it started dumping like right around here. I entered the stop loss was this high. It was on the high. Because, again, if it's going to go, it won't go back up again. That makes sense? Like, it, it literally, it won't go there again if it's going to take off. I mean, you can look at so many different examples. Look at every time the price pivots, right? If you enter, like, right here, look, it, it doesn't touch that again. Right here, even right here, right? Doesn't touch it again, doesn't touch it, doesn't touch it, doesn't touch it. You get the point. Right here, doesn't touch it. So um, yeah, we're gonna move the stop loss very quickly, especially after it dumps, like after that first candle, stop loss to the entry. So that's it for gold. Um, look at possible short-term sell for the buys. If not, then just staying patient and waiting for the big sell off around um, upper 1800s. Pound yen. Pound yen is blowing up. And I'm expecting it to turn around. It's just a matter of when. So we can see last week we ended right at the open of this week right here, which if we look to the left on these candles, that lines up really well as far as structure goes. And if we look even more left, it lines up really well here which is probably why we saw this initial reaction. Now, what I'm expecting, if pound yen is going to turn around, I do think we're gonna get something similar to this. This is a lot of bullish pressure, and I don't think that's just gonna end immediately and just see a dump. I think we will see price move up and make some sort of wick before we see that move down. Obviously, I'm aware right here, we didn't get that. Um, on the flip side, like right here, we didn't get that. Right here, we have a decent wick. So that's what I'm expecting. Even something like this, where if we move up here and close the week off, and then the second week we dump, and even if we buy back up, right? I mean, that makes sense to me. Because what I'm really looking for is just selling the retracement and then buying again, because it's possible that we're going to tap these highs, which is why I had it marked. Because in the case that we blast through this high and we keep going and we know we're not showing signs of rejection, then we're without a doubt, we're going to tap these highs again. I'm actually going to move that up to the, 
the peak right there, 158.2. Um, going into the four hour, we can see we have a massive move to the upside with no pullback, which again is the reason why I'm looking to um, short this. I'm basically looking for something like this. I right, see how we pushed up, pushed up, pushed up, and then we tipped over. This sort of pullback obviously isn't as big as what the one we're seeing right now or, or expecting because the move isn't wasn't as big. So my first target is going to be right here, this low. And the second target is the FIB, which is way lower. It's down here. So um, at the first target, TP1, I'm going to be looking to close a pretty good majority of the trade, probably like 80% of the trade. And then um, stop loss will be moved appropriately in profit. And then uh, we'll leave some partials to see if we do hit the FIB and come all the way back down here. So looking between these levels on the past four hour, you can see we it spiked up pretty perfectly on these levels. It dumped, came back about halfway through, dumped again. So that tells me that there's a lot of orders in this area between these two levels. I could draw a zone if I wanted to extend that. So what I'm really looking to see is price. Let me go to the first one hour. I'm looking to see wicks in here, right? So I want to see price being bullish at the start of the hour and then close the hour with big wicks. And along with the structure changing, that will lead to me um, looking to place an entry. If we continue our bullish push up and we break this, it's going to be really interesting because if we break this, what basically, if we break this, what I'm expecting, if we're going to sell, if we break this, it's not going to stay up there long at all. It's probably going to pop up there for like a little four hour wick and then tip over. So if we pop up here, and we close above here on the four hour with like no wick, then my interest in selling will slowly go away the longer and longer it stays above this level. So on the flip side, again, I think if we're going to sell off and we pop up above this level, we will definitely not stay there that long. And I will be looking at the four hour candle close. So if we pop up here, I want to see that four hour close back under here. And that tells me that there's enough rejection and that price is actually going to tip over as we're expecting. But if it closes above it with a very small wick, then we might just be breaking it and going full steam into these highs. So it'll all depend on what happens uh, when price reaches these levels. But as far as I can see, I'm expecting the retracement, which is going to be, let's say we can enter at the top, a good 300 pips. And then from there, obviously the 0.618 FIB was like right here. So from this range, um, you know, we could have a really, really nasty buy. So it all depends what happens. We'll, wa we'll wait and see, but that's what I'm looking for is uh, a spike up above here. I would actually prefer to see that four hour come up above here and then spike, which it might on the one hour, that might be like one or two candles. Like the one hour might close above here and then the next two come down here, which results in that four hour closing the pin bar, which um, would just, you know, that just confirms it really strongly. So that's it for pound yen, um, possible sells, uh, then buys. And let me refresh this. Pound Aussie, a uh, very similar kind of outlook. I'm expecting price to move up a little bit before we sell over. So what I'm seeing is this pattern on the daily, ignore this wick, Owanda's brokers, 
kind of whack sometimes. So we have this nice squeeze. I'm going to call it a channel. And we got a huge dump here. And we've been very, very choppy right here. And I'll zoom in in a minute. It's a pretty bullish flag looking style pattern, but I don't think it's ready to dump yet. If we do dump, the target is going to be around these lows. So pretty much 1.83 is where I want to be looking to get out of the trade. So as you can see, huge dump. And if I just draw this out, it's very clear. Oops. This is a very clear the type of pattern we're seeing here. However, I do think this is almost like a too good to be true sort of entry. And I think, you know, it's it's definitely possible that we tip over from here. Um, but I'm going to be very, very patient because I'm thinking we're going to pull back more towards the FIB, which, as you can see, is right in between these lines that I drew. And I'm basically, the reason I put these lines here are, I could adjust this if I want, top of this wick. So this, this huge candle, I see it as kind of like an imbalance. Plus, that's where the FIB is, so that lines up as, it, as itself, as well as if I extend this to the left, we can see that these highs over here tap this level. Um, I'm actually going to go like this for you guys. So this wick is determining these levels right here, and we see that sort of uh, movement on pound Aussie a lot. So earlier on. Um, way earlier like september last year this is a trade that we took actually no yeah i did mark it right there i had these levels marked and we waited for price to pull back in here and we took a short right there so i'm looking for a very similar style entry to happen right here um in the instance that we come up here and we reject this very heavily, I might throw a very light risk position on it with a tight stop loss in case it does want to tip over right here. But I'm definitely going to save the big risk positions for the possibility of price coming up into this area. And this is really what I'm betting on is price coming up in here. So that would look something like this. All right, I'm gonna delete these lines now. So it all depends on what Pound Aussie can do. Because basically, if this is gonna be bullish and fly up here, then obviously we're gonna reach this level. And so we, we might as well just wait anyway. So that's, Pretty much it, not a whole lot going on as it's the first week of the year. There's gonna be a lot of news, a lot of probably sporadic movements, but you know we can still find our way through the market and understand what's going on. So real quick, just to run through everything. Um, obviously the one we just covered, Pound Aussie, tons of sell pressure. We're getting that corrective structure. I think what we're gonna do is a little move up into this area, which is what, like 60, 130 pips, and then tip over, which is 500 pips. So that'd be a, that'd be a brilliant move down. Uh, Bitcoin's on the move already. We already entered that trade, expecting price to roll over from basically 48,000 down to around 42,000. Gold, we have overall looking to short from 1850. However, on the way to 1850, we might get a short-term sell and then the buy up. And then we'll look to sell from 1850. Target will be 1720s. When we sell from 1850, target's way down here. So this... If this short happens, this is going to be a huge short. So it's going to be an opportunity where 
if you ever wanted to put larger risk on, it would probably be the one to do it because the risk to reward is going to be like one to 20. And lastly, we had the pound yen cells kind of in line with the uh, pound Aussie cells looking for price to move up a bit. Um, not as much. That's 80 pips to the top of that channel. Delete this zone. Uh, before we start selling out. However, you know, it's possible that we break this and continue up. Looking at the indices for the yen, obviously, this is why the basket yen has been moving up is because the yen, I said basket yen, sorry, I meant pound yen has been moving up because the basket has just been moving down daily. It's pretty dang bearish. However, this is when it pivots. As you can see, every time it pivots, see how it's fully bearish and then it changes. See, fully bullish and then boom. Fully bullish, boom. Fully bullish, boom. Same right here, right? So down here, look at huge. Then we come up, right? So that's kind of what I'm looking for is it to start to pivot. And once it starts to pivot, then I'm looking for a retracement two of these levels, right? One of these levels, which will give us that nice short. And then a continuation down to this low, which will give us that really nice 600 pip long opportunity. So uh, that is about it this week, guys. Are there any questions? on anything well Colton's the only one in here but I'll send screenshots and all that stuff here in a minute hopefully we can see Bitcoin roll over that's the only position I'm in at the moment awesome I did send this out in the chat, so hopefully some of you guys took that entry. I have three entries on it right now. All right, I'm gonna stop screen sharing, stop recording.